Now, when would I do that same scenario and use an uplight? Well, now if I had, say, uh, again, a nice feature like this, and I had like a taller tree, um, just to my right, I have like a small apple tree. But if that apple tree was right here, I would do the same thing. I would use an uplight so that I can get that light further up into the canopy, but also cast some shadows back onto the nice wall and the nice feature I have here. So that's really the difference is when you would ch change and use these differently. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Today we're gonna to show you the RS Uplight. We've already installed it, it's already wired, but I wanna show you a couple features uh, that are nice about this. This one's been in for a while. We've used it to highlight this tree here, and as you can see, it's not too far back from the base. That's a common mistake that people tend to bring that light too far back and try and point it at the canopy. And what happens is um, you miss a lot of the trunking structure and stuff. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor, and fall is upon us. It is probably one of our busiest seasons for landscape lighting because the days are getting shorter, so you can actually see what your lights look like before you go to bed so it's a great time to go and start looking at your landscape lighting plan so go to lightingdoctor.ca go and access all our free resources including our free consultation where we help you design and build your own do-it-yourself landscape lighting kit and our try it before you buy it offers where you can actually go test and feel what a real quality fixture should look like and if you've got more questions just go to youtube subscribe to our channel for hundreds of great do-it-yourself videos or search lighting doctor in the search bar so good rule of thumb Obviously the bigger the tree, you're probably gonna have it a little bit further back so you don't create a big hot spot. But 12 to 24 to 36 inches back uh, is a great way. But a great way to, or a great tip, is that you almost always wanna adjust that light more upright than you actually think. So many people put it far back and they point it at the canopy. And what that does, is it creates a big hot spot. Whereas if you get it a little bit more upright, it tends to do a better job of highlighting the trunk, the branches, the leaves, and all of that stuff. So good rule of thumb when you're adjusting your lights uh, which are very easy with just a simple Phillips screwdriver loosen that off and in that more upright another thing I like about this guy here is that inside is a bulb that this tree is still fairly small um, and as that tree grows we can very easily just twist off this top part we got a nice rubber proof seal we've got our lamp in there then now we can just go and replace and same thing as this light burns out and 8, 10, 15 years, whatever it might be, you can very easily just go replace that with another MR16 bulb. And as that tree grows, if you want to increase the ten intensity of that light, you can also go do that just by swapping out the bulb inside, which makes it for a great light. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is a hex baffle. Um, I talk about these in a lot of videos. Anytime you have a light that is close to a walking area or you want to conceal the light source so as you walk beside it, that light's not shining in your eye, a simple hex baffle like this uh, is a really way, easy way to go do that. Basically, usually you just throw it right under the glass here, go put this back on, and now, we're gonna have very little glare from the side and around here. It's gonna really concentrate the light up here. It does take away a little bit from the light, but not a whole lot. So it's not something that I would typically worry about. But again, the nice thing about that is now, if you find that it does take away more than you would like for that tree, you can simply just go put a brighter bulb, still use that hex baffle and get a great effect. So one of the best lights on the market by far, incredibly well built, uh, the RS uplight that you can get in all our try it before you buy it kits go and plug it into our battery pack and test it out and really feel and see what that's going to look like before you go and have to buy a whole bunch so guys now i want to show you our ws wash light um, really good light an alternative to um, the rs uplight anytime you have a smaller feature uh, a smaller shrub um, long grasses flowers maybe a nice feature like this cool fence we have here, wine barrels, that kind of stuff. Anything you don't need a super intense bright light for, uh, this is a great option because if you notice it has a wider angle lens so it spreads that light a little bit further which softens it 
as well as it's got a frosted filter on there. So again, it makes that light a lot softer. So I recommend this. Anytime you have any structures, uh, features, anything like that that's under six feet, it's a great light. In this case, what we've done is we've used it to highlight really our uh, unique fence we have here as well as a wine barrel we have in the background. Again, same as our up light, there's an adjustable screw on this side that you can just simply, you can simply unscrew and then you can angle that a little bit. It comes with your LED bulb already built inside and it same thing is as that burns out, you can easily just undo these set screws, replace that bulb uh, and you can, if you find it's too bright, you can always lower the brightness of that. So again, a really good light, a great light if you're ever dealing with situations where you don't need something quite as bright, as intense as an up light, uh, really good for highlighting small, wide features. So I wanna show you an example here and distinguish when do you use an up light and when do you use a wash light. Uh, so one thing I will say is um, with an up light, an in-ground light is gonna do pretty much the same thing. It's gonna give you the same effect. And in a case like this, we actually have an in-ground light here. And the reason being is because we didn't always have this bed around us. This used to be a grass area. So this light was actually right in the grass. So we didn't wanna have something sticking out like out of the ground that we were gonna to have to trim around and stuff like that. So we actually put an in-ground light and we just haven't come around uh, to changing that yet. Um, so we used an in-ground light, but we're gonna get the same effect. It's just a matter of a, of a maintenance thing. In-ground lights are more expensive because they have to live in the ground. They have to be able to hold out water better. So that's why you pay more for them. But now, when would you use a wash light and when would you use a up light? So here's an example. And this is probably one of my favorite things to do is take advantage of shadows on different features. So we have this nice brick wall in front of us and I'll show you another example too. But um, whenever I have something like this, it's nice to go and highlight it, but if you can take it another step further and actually highlight whatever you have in front of it uh, against the brick wall, what's cool is this is just some tall grasses. We're not super fancy. There's not much to see. Sometimes it'll be a small shrub. Um, it's not an overwhelming feature to go and highlight, but what we can do now, is, especially with a wash light I like to use in a lot of cases, and especially if it's a wider, smaller shrub, is actually go and place this in front of that small structure so that not only are we highlighting the grass, but then we're creating all kinds of cool shadows against this back wall. So we're highlighting the wall, we're highlighting the plant, we're creating shadows, we're doing a bunch of stuff with one light and uh, it's a great way to get more bang for your buck. Now, when would I do that same scenario and use an up light? Well, now if I had, say, uh, again, a nice feature like this and I had like a taller tree um, just to my right, I have like a small apple tree, but if that apple tree was right here, I would do the same thing. I would use an up light so that I can get that light further up into the canopy, but also cast some shadows back onto the nice wall and the nice feature I have here. So that's really the difference is when you would ch change and use these differently. If um, same thing on this brick wall that we have, it's not overly high. I mean, it's not even six feet high. So there's no point in using a light like this. It's gonna be shooting light 15, 20 feet up in the air because really we're just gonna be wasting all that. Whereas a wash light, you know, after six to eight feet, it really disperses. Um, so you're really maximizing the ability of that light. Now, another thing I wanted to point out, just as I'm kind of here, same thing on a house. I talk a lot about um, highlighting the architectural features of your house and say you have some nice brickwork, some nice stonework, whatever it is. Uh, one of the common mistakes I see a lot of people, a lot of landscapers do, is they'll take their, whether it be an accent light or a wash light, they'll bring it way far back from the house and they'll shine it at the house. And then what it does, is it creates a big hot spot on the wall. And what you really wanna do is you wanna get that a lot closer. You wanna get it somewhere in this, in this vicinity, call it, you know, eight inches to maybe 24 inches back, depending on how bright that light is and how high you need it to shoot. If if you have a really tall house and you need to get that light 35 feet high, you're gonna have a brighter light in there. So you're probably gonna have to bring it a little bit further back so that you don't create too much of a hot spot here. But you're almost always better off, like I talk about even with some of the tree lighting, is get that light a little bit closer, use your adjustments and angle that light more upright than towards the house. Um, it's always a good rule of thumb is whatever angle you think, you probably wanna angle it up just a couple clicks higher just to make sure that you're really getting the best effect out of that light. 
But if you're in the same scenario and say this was a, a stone portion of the front of your house that you wanted to highlight, but it's only about four or five feet high, that's where I would do the same thing. But I would use a wash light now because it's not going to be as bright, intense of a light, and it's going to create a really nice effect without a lot of glare and a lot of hot spots. So that's really the difference when I would use these. Same thing, almost any time I'm doing a tree over six feet tall, I'm using something like this. If I'm doing a bush or a shrub that's wider, that's not super high, I'm probably gonna use a wash light. So I'll just share with you guys one little trick, um, something called a hex baffle. Uh, where we use these is just to deflect the glare off the up light. So sometimes if you have an up light like this, that's close to an area where people are gonna be walking, um, it's not necessarily gonna be pointing in their in their face or in their eyes or anything, but just to help keep that light a little bit more concentrated when they're looking at it from an angle, we're gonna use something called a hex baffle that basically just slides underneath the cap of your light and goes over the lens, or sorry, over the light and under the lens and snaps back on. Um, and then all that's gonna do is just deflect the light that's being uh, maybe portrayed that way. So that somebody looking down, they're not gonna see a light shining right up in there in your eyes. So this is a great, uh, a great little tip to use anytime you have a high traffic area where people might be walking by the light so they're not shining directly into their eyes. Hey guys, so I just wanna show you, uh, we're gonna use our accent light a whole bunch in this property. Um, and a lot of uh, common areas we're gonna use that is on some nice trees. We got a really nice tree here that we're gonna try and focus on. Um, but one thing I see people do too often or more times than not is instead of trying to get that tr that light nice and close to the tree and having it shine up so you're taking advantage of all the barking structure and then all the branching up top is they'll bring it far back and try and aim it at the tree and what happens there is they tend to miss a lot of the lower portions of the trees and then also when it um, you know depending on the area you, you live in if you start losing a lot of foliage in the winter time um, then having that light shine at all the foliage is kind of a waste of time and you, you lose a lot of the effect of that light. That's why I like having it closer to the tree. You know, here we're, we're maybe 12, 14, 18 inches away from the base. We're gonna have it shooting almost straight up because I wanna highlight all this uh, trunking and branching structure as possible, as well as now we're getting that light up into uh, the foliage and into the canopy. So again, with our standard uh, RS up light, uh, from FX Luminaire. There's lots of other good ones out there. Uh, I like this guy because it's a it's a real workhorse and that's what we're gonna use on this project. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. We're gonna show you guys how to light up your landscape with the FX Luminaire RS Uplight. Uh, this is a super durable, really high quality LED light that's great in your landscape. If you need to, say you need to highlight some, some beautiful trees that you have on your property, if you have some nice stone architectural features around your home, this is a great, great light to use. Um, you can change the intensity of the bulb just by using a different lamp. So if you have a small tree that's only maybe 10 to 15 feet high, you can use the standard uh, four watt LED lamp in here. If you're using trees that are maybe 15 to 20 feet high, you can increase that to the five watt LED or if you've got some giant oak trees or some really big trees on your property where you need to push that light at 25 feet or higher, that's where you get into the uh, six watt LED lamps uh, to really push that light out and make those features really, really stand out. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips. Now, please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page. It's full of great resources from our podcast or video to our most frequently asked questions and also check out our try it before you buy it light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a king innovation insta light which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property try it for 14 days if you don't love it send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund and if not you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback and have a great day.